Hi, welcome to my channel. Danette Gets Creative. I'm Danette. Here we are with another little house. So what I've done is I've created um, a pattern here on felt and then I'm going to stick the felt to the material. And maybe you've already guessed based on the fabric here that the house I'm about to create is a mushroom. So just going to take the time to put down all of these felt pieces onto material and then we'll get cracking and sew them together. Hope you're all doing fine. Hope you're sitting down with a needle in your hand and a project ready to go. I've really been enjoying these houses. I hope you have been too made a little mistake there. I forgot that I needed to leave a little bit of a seam allowance there so I started cutting really close before I realized that I was making a mistake but that's okay. Once I get the needle and thread in there and sew it, it'll be fine. I've chosen this light colored stripe fabric that I'm going to use for the under part of the mushroom, the base of the mushroom so I'm just going to take a minute to cut it out as well, glue it down. In this video you'll see me um, do the decorations of the house, creating the house decorations with felt and embroidering some lines and creating some grapes. And stick around to the very end where you see uh, a little bonus when you get to the photos at the end. You'll see a little um, guest who's come to live in this house. So hopefully you'll stick around to the end and see who that little guest is. And that little guest will be a bonus video. So I hope you enjoy this video. Stick around. And... I hope I inspire you to go and make your own little mushroom. So I'm just going to finish up the trimming here. And then I'm going to work on the mushroom top. Just using a piece of um, muslin here just to create um, a piece for the underside of the mushroom. You don't really see the underside of the mushroom so I just chose a neutral color. And the only reason why I use the felt just like any of my other houses is just to give them a little bit of stability. I'm just going to take some white thread and I'm just going to do a quick little running stitch around the edge And this is going to allow me to gather up the edge. And then I'm going to stuff it and sew the bottom piece of muslin on to create the mushroom cap, the mushroom top. I just created this pattern myself. I'll try to scan it and put a link in the description box where you can go and grab it if you want to. I'm sure there's probably patterns online too that you could search. This one I just kind of drew it on paper and hoped it worked and it actually worked out quite well. So just zip it around the edge here. Then I'm going to gather it all up. knot there. Wouldn't be a sewing project without a little knot or unthreading of the needle. So there's the base of the mushroom. And I'm just going to go around and put a little pin in it. And sew it almost completely shut. 
going to leave a little bit of an opening so I can stuff it with some stuffing. go I'm almost there just trying to flatten out those little gathers and make them a little bit more equal instead of them all being bunched up in one spot there we go one more little pin <clears throat> excuse me and leave a little bit of an opening And then I'm going to sew all the way around. There it is. Turned it right side out. And now I'm just going to stuff it through the little opening. I love the red and white polka dot. It's really cool. Actually really makes this project pop. So that little section closed. And then I'm going to set aside the mushroom cap, the mushroom top. And I'm going to move on to decorating the base. I've stuffed it quite firm. Because I wanted to do I wanted it to be full. And have that nice half circle kind of shape. So a quick little stitch closing it up. Just a little whip stitch trying to hold, uh, hide it as best I can. Tucking in the raw edges and closing it up. Almost there. There we go. Final few stitches. There we go. There's the mushroom top. Set it aside and then we're going to start on the base. Get some wrinkles out. And then I'm going to go around and stitch down with a little bit of the allowance that I left just with a quick little slip stitch makes the edge nice and tidy and finished so I'll finish that off and now I have some red felt and I'm just cutting out a door. Just tidying up that little edge. And there's a red door. And I thought at first I might want to outline the red door with the white, but because the that background fabric is so light, I decided against it. But I do like the contrast with the white and the red. So I create these little white panels that I'm going to stitch onto the door. Just trying to make them a little bit more of the same. So I'm doing a couple little trims. And I will end up putting down four panels and a window, a half 
circled window for the top. There we go. Four panels. Oops. Just tipped them all up there. There we go. Four panels. And then I'm just going to cut off a half a circle to create the window at the top. Instead of pins, I'm going to use a little bit of glue to secure these so that I can stitch them. I'm trying to put pins in all those teeny tiny things wouldn't be a good idea. I'd end up poking myself. So just a quick stick down. And then I'm just going to use white sewing machine cotton and teeny tiny running stitches and secure the door and secure the panels down. Starting with the white panels and the white window and then later I go around and trace, sorry, not trace, but outline the whole red door. Just tiny stitches just to secure it in place. There we go, doors all secured down. And now what I have is just some green wool. I don't even know how to describe the wool. It's chunky and it's thin and it's bumpy. It's quite textured. So I am just couching it down with some white sewing machine thread, trying to create the idea of a vine. I'm just twisting and turning and I will weave it all over the house, the bottom of the mushroom. Just going around, really just eyeballing it and thinking where I best like it and where I would like it to sit on the project. Putting a couple of little stitches in it. Did a little loop there just to create a little bit of interest. I'm using white sewing machine cotton. It was only because it was what's on my desk, but I could have also used green to help mask it a little bit. But in the world of slow stitching, part of the fun is seeing your stitches. So that's why I chose. So you can see I just laid it down there to kind of give myself an idea. So I got all the vine down and now what I'm doing is I'm using the same green um, textured wool and I'm just zigzagging it and layering it on top of itself. And what I'm trying to do is just create two little shrubs, two little trees beside the door. Also just couching it down as well. Doing that zigzag, layering it on top of itself until I get it the height I want. I also end up doing a second one on the other side of the door. to the top where I'm just going to finish it off. Kind of making it a little bit like a, a Christmas tree shape, I guess. Securing down that last little end so it kind of creates a point at the top of the tree. Giving a couple extra stitches in there 
just to secure down all the loose bits. So there's one, and I will do a second one. There we go. Two trees and a vine done. Now what I have is some purple variegated wool. And let me tell you, the struggle is real. This wool is not very cooperative. It knots and it gets stuck and it breaks. It was uh, definitely a challenge. If you could hear me mumbling under my breath, my goodness, it was frustrating me to no end. Every time I try to do the French knot, it would get stuck and knotted. These grapes were not fun, but at the end, you will see that they actually turn out quite nice and they add a really cool detail to the vine. I think the special little guest at the end of the video would enjoy these grapes a lot. So stick around and check out that photo at the end to see who that little special guest might be. Anyway, so you can see, I'm just going to use this purple. I do not video all of this because it is super frustrating for me and I'm sure not fun for you all to watch me take knots out. So I continue on and I do little clumps of grapes throughout the vine. So just a quick little view with that one. I'm going to move on to another one. And like I said, I'll go off the video here and finish all of the grapes. This is when I start getting really frustrated. It starts to get quite knotted here. So there it is. All the grapes are done. I sewed down the seam. I added a little laundry label that says 98. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to put the bottom together. I'm going to sew the bottom on. Then I will fill the base with um, stuffing and I will attach the two pieces together. There we go, zipping around. Zip, zip, zip. <laughs> Quick little whip stitch. Right side it out. It's so cute, I like that red and white. It's such a cool contrast. And that little laundry label worked out perfect as well. I'm showing you just the measurements here with the ruler, but then I realized the ruler is really shiny. So I actually pull out my measuring tape just to show you the height and how big the top is. I often get requests and comments about sizes, so I'm trying my best to remember that step and show the sizes where I can. So stuff the base. And then attach it to the top, and this was a bit of a finicky prop, um, process. I held it upside down and started stitching it this way. Then I end up turning it over. I don't know if there's any real easy way to do this step. I think it's whatever works best for you. Just get the two pieces attached. Super cute. I really like it. Let me know in the comments what you think. I think the colors are fantastic. Just 
just going to finish up and then you will see I take this piece of smaller red and white dot and I'm just tracing the lid of an old spice bottle. I actually have my beads in it now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a small little mushroom that I'm going to use for the chimney. So this is very finicky because that circle's not much bigger well then uh, here in Canada, toony. So it's pretty tiny to do the little gathering stitches and stuff it and then attach it to a base as well. I end up taking white felt and rolling up the felt to create the base of this tiny little mushroom and then I will attach it to the top to create the chimney. So stick around until the end. You will see some photos that show a close-up image of the finished house and the very last photo will show you who the little guest is. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you do stick around to the end and you see the little guest, the little guest will be featured in another uh, video which I will probably try to put out for tomorrow. So thanks again for watching. I appreciate all the time that people are putting into watching my videos. I love the comments and uh, I appreciate all the information and ideas and encouragement that people are giving me. So again, take care. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon. Stick around for the photos at the end. Bye now.